So my old laptop disappeared, and well, I mostly game on desktop, do all my work on desktop for the most part. I need that laptop for work. If I don't have a laptop, I'm constantly traveling. I'm constantly doing things on the go. I move all over my house, working on mining rigs, frankly, just watching TV on the couch or in my bed. And I need to be able to always do things, no matter where I am. Eventually, I'm hoping we can have phones that fold out into tablets, maybe project a keyboard. I know it sounds like science fiction, but 10 years, I'm really hoping we can have phones that can dual boot Windows and Android, or at least whatever the standard operating system for creators is at the time, so I only need a powerful phone that folds into a laptop. But we're not there yet. So I had to replace my laptop sooner rather than later, even though I certainly didn't goddamn want to. But my brother Dan found this excellent deal, and so I'm very excited to get this. This is a laptop I've wanted pretty much my whole life, and where I'm coming from is a, it was a KB Lake i7 with a base clock of 1.8 gigahertz, you know, four cores, eight threads, as per usual with Intel, and an MX150 graphics card, which I actually had a review of that I was going to release eight months ago, the first video for my channel. But it didn't turn out well. Uh, I, I like the MX150, but like most NVIDIA graphics cards, it essentially aged like fruit. Some say milk. Not well over time. That won't happen with this one. So this is an HP Spectre laptop. This is one of their flagship series. And you can tell, I don't think it picks up that well actually on the camera, but this is like a shiny metallic bronze material. So I will be doing an unboxing of this today, and there will be several reviews coming out in the coming weeks. Because this is a laptop that has HBM. That's right, HBM, HBM APU. This is ahead of its time, and a processor actually has a base clock of 3 gigahertz because of the extra well, we'll say thermal room they have from using this efficient AMD graphics card they put in the SoC. But let's get to what this looks like, because I wasn't going to do an unboxing, but when I saw this package, man, was it impressive. You know, it comes with a 150-watt, I believe, charger, uh, which is really overkill, but that means HP's been doing that. That means this will charge the battery in about half an hour. That's right. It has an 11-hour battery life, and it comes with a charger that will charge it in half an hour. That's that's cool. And maybe when I take this wrap off, you'll get the idea. Can you see it now? Oh, yeah. That looks better on the camera. Look at that shininess. And I, I'm glad I waited because I was actually going to get a sleeve because this is one of the nicest laptops I've ever got. To be clear, this six months ago was a $2,000 laptop. It has an HBM APU and 11-hour battery life, a folding 4K HDR display, an infrared full HD camera, which will be great for on-the-go video editing, recording videos of myself. More on that soon. I will be doing some trips with interviews with people. This is going to make my workloads on the go excellent. So I'm very excited for that. But yeah, it comes with a leather sleeve. So let's open that up too, uh, which is a nice touch, actually. And it's thin. It's exactly what I want. I can just put that, okay. Don't need that. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. And they even have a nice tab here to open it. Yeah, this will be perfect for protecting my high-end laptop. Again, I didn't pay $2,000 for this, $1,200, and I actually got a discount because I used to work for State Farm as an industrial engineer. I know, for those taking a running total of the jobs I've had, I have had a lot. And I still get the State Farm discount, so that's nice. It also comes with a pen to use on the touch screen. Yep, there it is. Comes with a battery, which again, it's kind of laughable to me when people don't give you a battery with products anymore. I mean, what is that, 10 cents so I don't have to screw around? I like how intuitive it is to take things apart these days. There we go. Hmm. Very cool. Okay. 
Maybe peel this off too. There we are. All right, let's get to it. It's actually a very nice protected. It's a pretty nice box, honestly. Probably keep it for a while. Here's your setup instructions. Don't need that. Okay. Congratulations on your HP purchase. Yeah, HP's had some bad years, but they typically make some really cool products from time to time, like this one. All right, so yeah, again, you know, shiny bronze. I think that's a nice touch. Put that like this. Oh, actually, let's uh, make a little thing here where I can show you guys. That looks good, doesn't it? Okay. Well, it's a bit heavier than I expected, but again, this has a Vega graphics card with 4 gigabytes of HBM over 1,024-bit bus, and the i7 clocks above 4 gigahertz, and from what I read, it actually maintains boost clocks close to 4 gigahertz. I probably need to get Zen 2 or Threadripper at some point, people. At this point, this laptop has an i7 comparable to the one on my desktop. Oh, wow. What you can't see from where you are now is how shiny this really looks. Yep, this is my new editing on the go laptop. Yeah, a bit bigger than I wanted, honestly. But it is decently thin, and this will still fit in my backpack. So things are changing for me. It's not, I need to be able to do everything I do on my desktop over there on the go now. I really do need to. I'll be going to a. Wow, look at that. Presentation convention soon where I'm going to be doing rapid videos for you guys while I'm in Silicon Valley. More on that in the future. And it folds over. Now, this is Corning Stone. This is Gorilla Glass, so. No. <laughs> but it should be able to take a drop or two. It should have been standard in laptops for a long time. And again, I can now do this, do this, and start, you know writing stuff, or more likely the way you'd probably use it is to put it kind of just like this to the side and then write, take notes while you're at a presentation, which is what I will be doing. Yeah, I guess I don't know how much more you guys want to see. Very excited to bring you reviews of what a 1024-bit Vega card is like because those might be coming. Eventually, I do think AMD is going to move to HBM for most things. You have to remember they're selling HBM cards, Vega 50, well, professional versions of dual Vega 56s in bulk to Google for Stadia. And as they do that, HBM prices will finally start coming down a lot. Uh, they're not going to be as cheap as GDR6, but they really do offer like quadruple the efficiency, less rooms taken up. Eventually, I really think you're gonna see more and more laptop chips from AMD use HBM, like this one. And you're going to see a lineup where probably all the way down to their $300, probably $400 cards, maybe 300, may, right? So right now, um, as time of this recording, Navi's probably gonna be 350 and 400, I believe. Um, and at those price points, yeah, I think eventually you're going to see $300 cards from AMD with HBM and over 1,024-bit bus. That's what this has in it. And it, I'm going to also undervolt it and overclock it. I'm going to try to push this 20 compute unit graphics card to clock as high as desktop chips with good cooling, undervolting. I'm really going to push this thing to see if I can get this to be a laptop as strong as an RX 570 with an 11 hour battery life. Because this is real, and I have a lot of things to say about how AMD is doing in the laptop market, and that's what I'm gonna bring you with this product right here. All right, well, I guess let's just turn it on quick, right? Yeah, I got USB-Cs, a normal USB, which again, should be standard. You wanna keep at least one normal USB on a laptop. Right, let's see, 
He has an SD card reader here. What does that do? Thumbprint reader. That's nice. Oh, and it is on, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, you can just see me. Look at me looking at Google Analytics. Now well, you can kind of see the logo. Maybe if I just... I can all kind of make opinions about my household. And so it's doing the first boot up, of course. I wonder if it can... Yep, and it just flips over like that. Well, I can't really see it. There go. But yeah, so I guess to recap... Shut up. It's quiet now. <laughs> but yeah, so expect a full review of Vega M, mobile Vega APUs with HBM and a laptop, a review of the processor, because I do think this actually has the best yields of Intel's quad cores. This is a 25 watt quad core with a base clock above 3 gigahertz. I'm going to undervolt and see if I can get this to match my desktop's performance. And if I can, that's going to be pretty crazy. I mean, the processor. Obviously, the graphics card won't. Um, and then I'll probably do some kind of overall review. Um, I've already got some ideas, at least an in-depth discussion of what AMD needs to do to take laptop market share. Because products like this are the best product you can get in this form factor. This takes up the same amount of room as something that would be like a... 45 watt i7 and or Ryzen processor and a I don't know 1050 Ti. I mean, and that those will use more energy. 1050 Ti, even the Max Q version uses 40 watts on its own, and this is really a 45 watt i7 in here. So we're talking about you need to use 50 percent more energy to match the performance. But I guess NVIDIA is cheaper. But this, uh, you know, and this gives you better. This is, AMD really has the most premium products now for the laptop. They soon will for desktop. Zen 3 is going to change a lot. So I have a lot to say about that. I think this is about where I end. I wasn't even planning on doing an unboxing. But when I saw the packaging that looks really cool, right, I was like, well, I should do an unboxing quick. So hope you enjoyed this. Prepare for many more videos on mobile HBM to come. And, uh, yeah, thank you.